in this second part of lecture 4 the lecture 4 is on literature review I would like to explore in this second part systematic literature review systematic literature review is a new way of doing literature review what why it is new because traditionally it used to be carried out in medicine when somebody has tried the efficacy of a medicine across different cultures, different populations, then they would put together all the findings and say globally how it is going to work. And on that basis, they are going to really invest on the production of a medicine. But today, we have the advantage of digital e-resources. And because of that, in social sciences, many scholars are suggesting that any serious thesis should begin with a systematic literature review. What is systematic literature review? In simple words, you choose a digital database of literature such as EBSCOhost, GSTOR or a specific uh, database that is maintained by Sage Publishers or Springer or Oxford. I suggest EBSCOhost for social sciences because it brings together a lot of other digital databases. Now if you go into your library and you ask your librarian how to use it, I'm sure even in Kenya, all the libraries are subscribing to digital databases in the universities because the universities have formed a consortium and they're paying as a group for subscription or access to these databases. databases. Now, how do we go about the systematic literature review? Many of uh, the published papers on systematic literature review propose four stages. The first is to carry out a systematic search of literature. So let us just call it literature search. Second is literature selection. Third, literature analysis. And fourthly, reporting findings. So I repeat, literature search, literature selection, literature analysis, reporting of findings. Now let me briefly explain what happens in these four steps. So you choose a digital e-resource uh, website and you, tick, you select the databases that you want. And usually it gives a box for search term. You give your key term that is related to your research in that uh, a search box. For example, let us go back to our women empowerment. So you, there is no need to give long sentences. They are not key words. You give women empowerment, divorce, just three terms. See what uh, uh, files come up. What are the research reports from articles uh, of journals come up. Then you filter the search by selecting, for example, full texts that are available, by selecting years, by selecting articles only from peer-reviewed uh, journals, and finally, you are fi coming up with, let us say, if you're a BA student, I would recommend for your thesis, you must read at least 25 to 30 articles from, uh, uh, from peer-reviewed journals. If you're an MA student, you could increase that to 40, 50. If you're a PhD student, you might want to go for 60. Now, you summarize now the patterns in these articles that you have selected and you report in your literature review. So I would suggest for every objective, you could carry out a systematic literature review. And in the additional sources, I will provide reading material on this and examples of published papers. If you want to aim at something like a published, you want to publish your own research, let us say if you're a master's student or a PhD student, the first thing that you can publish is a systematic literature review. But if you're a BA student, surely you should begin by just experimenting with this systematic literature review. We are in the 21st century and we should do research and literature review in the way of the 21st century.